hello guys welcome back to my channel if you're an old subscriber thank you for subscribing to our channel thank you for the support we really appreciate and it means a whole lot to us and if you're new to this channel you're welcome thank you for stopping by in this channel we teach everything crafts we teach everything fashion business talk pattern drafting sewing tips so trust me you want to really join this family today i'm going to be showing us how to draft a basic bodice block and it's going to be a half scale block and trust me this is going to be very very detailed so you actually want to watch this video to the end and i'm going to be dropping the list of items you'll be needing and the measurements you'll be needing for these tutorials and it's going to come up as a highlight as well so let's get straight into this tutorial so guys this is the pattern paper i'm making use of now when you measure the full width of my paper, I have 24 inches and I've gone ahead to divide it into two equal parts. Can you see? I have 24 inches here, but I measured 12 inches, right? So one side is going to serve as a front block, while the other side will serve as my back block. Another way to get this division is to use the fullest part of your measurement divided by 4 plus your same allowance to get it, right? next thing i'm going to be doing is to be marking my shoulder to my bust point which is 10 inches i'm going to be ruling a straight line with my ruler then i'm going to repeat this for the back so i'm actually going to be doing both front block and back block at the same time to show you the difference so i'll go ahead and repeat this to the back block as well The next thing I'm going to mark is the shoulder to the half length. So we're actually working with 17 inches for a half length when it comes to the front. Then the back is 15 and a half. So if you know how to take your proper measurements, you would know that the front half length and the back half length is actually different. But in case you've not seen this video, I'm going to be dropping the link at the description box so you will learn how to take proper and accurate body measurements. So for the back, my half length is 15 and a half. So I'm going to be marking that across as well. So right here, this is going to serve as my front block. Why this other one is going to be serving as the back block. So let's get into the next step, which is taking our shoulder measurement. Now the shoulder we are working with is 16 inches divided by 2 that is going to give us 8 inches so i'll go ahead and mark 8 inches like so then the next thing is getting my neck width and my neck depth so for the neck width we are going to be working with three and a half right the neck depth we are going to be working with three and a half right you can actually decide to make this three by, uh, three by three or depending on your client's preference, you can make it 4 inches by 4, depending on how wide and deep the client wants it. We are going to be using our armhole curve to connect these doors together. We are working with a, a circle neckline. So this is how to mark a circle neckline. After that, we are going to be coming down by 1 inch at the shoulder measurement. We will mark 8 inches earlier. We are going to be coming down by 1 inch. This is to enable us to mark our shoulder slope. So if you actually notice, your shoulder is not straight. So that is why we are marking this shoulder slope. It helps your dress relax at the shoulder area. Then when you are done, we are going to come down to get our chest line measurement. Now to get your chest line measurement, you are going to divide your bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5. Whatever it is you have, that is going to be your chest line. I will be placing my tape rule from the slanted line then i'll mark my chest line then i'm going to route this line across and after that i'm going to connect the lines from the slanted line to the chest line measurement and i'm going to make sure that i have a straight line by measuring from my center front to the line to make sure i have the same measurement as my shoulder so this is the chest line this is the bust line and this is going to be the waist line Next, we are going to be finding the midpoint of our chest line. 
So from this slanted line to the chest line measurement, we are going to measure it and get the midpoint. And at that midpoint, we are going to be coming in by half inch. Because if you notice, our front armhole is not straight. So this half inch we came in by will help us create that curve. So I'm going to be ruling this like so. Can you see this? I rule that line to the shoulder point. Now I want to point out I made some corrections at the bust line. My shoulder to my bust is 11 inches and not 10 inches. So I discovered that late. So I actually made that adjustment. I did it for both front and the back panel. So my shoulder to my bust line is 11 inches and not 10. So having done that correction, let's go back to what we're doing. I wrote this slanted line from the shoulder point to the half inch we came in by. Then after that, I'm going to go to the back measurement, right? Let us put the shoulder line for the back measurement. For the back panel, we are going to be marking our shoulder measurement, which is 16 divided by 2, that is 8 inches. Then for the neck width, we are doing 3.5, just the way we did for the front. Then the neck depth, we are going to be marking 1.5 inch. You can actually make it 1 inch or 1.5 so this is how i'm going to be placing my ruler to connect these dots when i'm done connecting the dots i'll go back to the place i marked my eight inches for the shoulder and i'll come down by one inch for the shoulder slant you can call this the shoulder slant or shoulder slope as you can see we did the same thing for the front line for the front panel sorry then after that the next thing is to be getting our chest line measurements so I'm going to be marking this and I'll confirm if it's still the same measurement with my shoulder before connecting the lines so why I'm confirming if it's the same measurement with my shoulder is to enable me get a straight line okay so we're going to do that then we're going to find the midpoint between this chest line and mark our midpoint just exactly what we did for the front Right, and I'm finding the midpoint of my chest line, just the way I did for the front. I'm going to be marking this, then I'll come in by half inch. Then I'm going to be ruling this line straight to my shoulder point. After that, let's go ahead and impute our bust measurements and our waist measurements. So I'm going to be placing the bust measurement on the chest line and the same thing at the bust line. Note, the, the measurement on your chest line is the same measurement as your bust measurement. So I'm going to place that and I'll repeat the same thing for the back. The next thing we are going to be doing is to imputing our waist measurement. We are going to be putting it for the front and for the back. So kindly note that we have not added any form of size seam allowance to this. So we are just marking the main measurement. So we are going to be connecting these lines together from the chest line to the bust, from the bust to the waistline. When we are done connecting this, we are going to be connecting our armhole next. So we are going to be connecting from the slanted line to the measurement we marked earlier. So with our armhole curve, this is how I'm going to be placing my armhole curve. Can you see this? So you will make sure that each point are meeting each other. So this is it. After that, I'll go ahead and open up my dart. Now for your dart intake, you're going to be measuring your bust span divided by two. And for this bus pan, I'm working with four and a half. So I'll be connecting four and a half, and I'll be putting it on my bus line as well. Four and a half. Then I'll connect my dart legs together. We're going to be connecting these dots from the bus point to the waistline. Then we're going to be coming to the waistline, and we're going to open up our dart by half inch on both sides. That is, we're taking one inch away from the measurement. So we're going to be connecting this dart from the bust to the half inch on both sides. 
just follow what i'm doing you're going to really get it can you see this and we're going to be repeating this for the back as well now for the back there's a bit of an alteration here because the dart is not meant to get to the bust entirely so we're going to mark in four and a half at the waist then four and a half at the bust then at your bust line we're going to be coming down by one inch this is because our dart is not meant to get to the bust point so we're going to be connecting from that one inch down to the waistline so we're going to draw a straight line to the waistline then as usual we are going to open up our dart leg by half inch on both sides then connect the lines together Now the rule of pattern drafting is whatever is it you're taking out from your measurements, you make sure you're returning it back to the side. So because we took out one inch for our dart, we're going to be returning one inch to our side measurement, which is what I'm doing right here. So once we've returned it, we're going to be connecting this line from the bust down to the waist. So can you see how I'm going to be connecting this from the bust here down to the waist? So this is going to be our new measurement. So we are going to be cleaning off the one inside. I'll do the same thing for the front. Then I'll go ahead and clean out this inner measurement. So by the time you transfer this to your fabric and you take your dart, it's going to come back to your original measurement. I hope you understand this. So I'm going ahead to reconnect this line properly so you can see this. So this is it for the back and the front. The next thing we're going to be working on is... Okay, before that, can you see that the front and the back half length is not equal? The front was 17 inches while the back was 15 and a half. The difference we have is 1 and a half inches. So we we'll come to the bust and we're going to come down by one and a half inches and we're going to connect this to the dart leg. This is going to serve as our bust dart. So by the time we close this bust dart, you'll find out that the front side line and the back side line is going to be matching up. So we are going to be cutting this out. Then we are not needing our dart leg as well because these are the things we are going to be taking out when we begin to sew our dress. Now the next thing we are going to be doing right now, we are done with the front and the only thing for the back right now is the zipper alterations. So we are going to be working on the zipper area next. I went ahead to attach extra paper at the center back of our pattern. This is to enable us to draft the zipper parts. So can you see the main measurement here? Now I'm going to extend this line from the bust point to the waistline and the neckline as well. So I'm going to be extending this line. Then for the main measurement here, I'm going to be highlighting the center back so you don't get it confused. So this place I'm marking right now is the initial measurement we have for our pattern. Why the excess is the attachment for our zipper. Can you see? Now the next thing we are going to be doing is to come in at the waistline. From the original measurement we have, we came in by half an inch. And we are going to be connecting this half an inch to our neckline. Note, we are working on the, the original measurement we have and not on the extra attachment. So I came in by half inch and I drew this line. So this is a way of contouring our back because our back is not straight. So when you fix your zipper without doing these alterations, you end up having your zipper bulging. So from that half inch we already altered, we are going to be coming out by one inch for our zipper. So we are no longer working with the original measurement. We are working with the one half inch we came in by, right? And we are going to be slanting our measurements likewise. So if you look at this property, you see that the zipper is slanted. It is not straight. So whatever excess we have, we are going to be cutting this out. So this is our zipper allowance.
If you're done with your zipper allowance, you proceed putting your side seam allowance. For, for the side, I'm adding one inch seam allowance. For the armhole, half inch. For the shoulder, I'm adding half inch. Then for the neckline, half inch as well. Then I'll do the same thing for the back. For your center sides, you can decide to put one and half inch allowance or two inches, depending on what you actually want. But for me, just one inch is fine. Then I'm going to be cutting this out, then closing the bust that. Personally, I prefer putting my side seam allowance when I'm transferring my pattern to my fabric. So let us cut this out, and I'll be showing us how to close the bust that. So to close your bust that, can you see how I'm folding this? This is not really that easy to do, but trust me, you can do it. So kindly close your bust that, making it to meet the bust line. Just do it the way I'm doing it right here, and you're going to get it perfectly. Can you see the way I folded it? Then I'm going to be using my maxing tape, and I'm going to be holding this down. I'm not cutting it out, I'm just using my maxing tape to hold it down. Now once you've closed your bust that, can you see that the side is not aligning anymore? So all I'm going to do is to contour this. I'm going to use my ruler and I'll reconnect the lines. Like I told you, this is a very detailed tutorial. So if you follow this properly, you won't have any problem drafting your half scale block. So now that we've reconnected this line, we're going to be cutting this on the new line we've connected. Can you see? Then we're going to cut our armhole as well. So basically this is what we're going to be doing, cutting on the lines we've actually made. So when cutting, make sure you're not cutting in deep into your measurements or outside so you don't give yourself excess measurements. So make sure you're cutting on the line directly. And remember the scissors you use for your pattern should be different from the scissors you use for drafting your sorry for cutting your fabric <laughs> this is an extra tip anyways so this is what we have for the front panel can you see how our boss is already protruding can you see this is looking more like a dress even though it's not on the fabric yet so this is the function of the bust that so this is our front panel or the front block then let us cut for the back for the back to be in place, I use my maxing tape to hold the zipper allowance together. So I'm going to be cutting this just the way we did for the front. So we cut the down out. Now can you notice this zipper? Where we are cutting out is the remaining excess we have. Can you see? So I'm cutting just on that excess. So always remember your zipper is meant to be slanted and not straight. Then we are going to cut out every other thing. The, the back doesn't have a boss that, so it should be very, very easy to cut out. Guys, we are done with our pattern and this is what we have. Now, let me show you something. I'm putting the two sides together. Can you see it aligns now? And this aligning is possible because we folded the bust that. Remember, the front block was actually longer than the back block before. So, folding the bust that makes it possible for the two sides to align. So we've come to the end of this class. If you got value, kindly give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.